Here we are once again on NASCAR Race Hub, and there's the 43 Chevrolet of Bubba Wallace, and uh, they were able to tow that thing away, and the crew spent a long time in the garage breaking down that machine to figure out exactly what went wrong. There, there are scary moments in a lot of NASCAR races, but that is as scary as I've seen in a long time, AJ. Yeah, you're flying down the straightaway at Pocono in turn one, and anytime you have a brake failure, there's nothing good that happens from there. Here is, is what happened. We're less than 10 laps to go, and once you get into the grass, it is just hang on and ride it out. And, and luckily, Bub is able to turn that wheel to the left so he doesn't go head on into the safer barrier. But it was a scary time. The best scene is when that window net came down, Bubba gets out under his own power, and he is going to be just fine. There's, there's no feeling like being helpless in that situation. That's what I was going into one. and. I, the lap before, I was uh, holding off the 10 car and went into one, and the pedal started really creeping fast to the floor. And I'm like, oh boy, so I let him by. No, but I gotta let him and, uh, and then back into one again. It, I was pumping it up, just to make sure, a little courtesy pump. And whew, there she went. She blew up, too much heat, I guess, blew up. And I should have stayed against the fence and used it to slow me down. I think Casey did that last year here. Uh, Jimmy did kind of the same thing I did, and, and um, that feeling going through the grass, and you're just like, hope and pray that you'll be all right. So luckily we're fine. I'm so glad that he is okay, because as I said, that was a scary moment, and he mentioned Jimmy Johnson season ago. Very similar situation. The brakes go away, 48 slams the wall, and Johnson, much like Bubba, climbs out and takes him some time to gather his thoughts. Go back to 2006. Now for Jeff Gordon, he didn't hit with the passenger side. He turned around and slapped that wall on the driver's side of that Chevrolet. Luckily, the uh, four-time champion, now Fox analyst, also able to climb from that wrecked car, and he was okay. So let's go next level and, and look back at what happened Sunday for Bubba Wallace. And it's a scary place. There's no banking. You lose your brakes, and all that speed equals big-time problems, AJ. Yeah, and as Bubba said, it's a helpless feeling. I've had it. I had it six years ago going into turn two. Bubba made a comment there that as a driver, we, we all should do and try to do, and it's the fact that as he started that, he said he should have turned right. It's so hard to get yourself mentally as you lose the brakes to say, you know what, turn right, straighten the wall right now, and just use the wall to slow yourself down, which would make the blow of hitting the wall a lot less. But as drivers, our thought is to try to save it, get away from the wall. Well, unfortunately, when you don't have brakes, you don't stop. So the biggest thing right here, and you talked about it, Adam, is the fact going through the grass, he was going straight head onto the wall. As we see it right here, he was headed straight up there. Just what he gets the car to do is he hits the banking right here. He turns the wheel hard left as we see it now. He's turned left heading towards that way. So it makes this blow a lot less cushioning it on the right side of the door instead of hitting it head on. And that's the toughest thing as a driver. If you hit the wall head on and you stop immediately, that's where all the damage to your body comes from because you take all the force of the wreck. He got it to turn just enough to hit the right side of the car, which although it was still a big hit, was a lot softer than it would have been. Because when you're in the grass, you really have absolutely no control over the wheel, right? None, and you have no brakes. So as you're trying to slow down, the pedal's already to the floor. So all he did there was make a hard left with the steering wheel, just turned it enough to hit the, the wall with the right side of the car. It probably saved a lot of damage to his body. The other thing you notice right there, the impact into the safer barrier, and it speaks to the safety that we've been able to, to gain over yeah, a number of years. We, we talk about it every year when we see a wreck like this. Just the cushion of this safer barrier, it gives a lot. Everything cushions the blow instead of concrete where it basically just doesn't move. He cushions the blow. It just makes it so much better. The safety that NASCAR and, and these racetracks have come out with, with these safer barriers, our head and neck restraint system, makes it so much safer than it ever has been before. Good news is, I mean, overall he's okay, right? But a little banged up, and I'm sure we'll be a little sore yeah. as the week goes on. Now we go to Watkins Glen, right and left. A lot, of, a lot of throwing yourself around in the car. What is the impact going forward? Yeah, and, and he talked about it after his wreck. He banged up his ankles a little bit. I'm not sure which, which ankle, if it's both ankles, but at Watkins Glen, that's going to be the biggest thing. You're using your right and left foot a lot. It's going to be during the week to ice it down, get the swelling down, try to make it minimize the pain in those ankles because he's going to be using them a lot. 